Tennessee Children's Home Spring Food Drive ends this Thursday, so um, be aware of that there's a list of items that we're <coughs> requesting on the bulletin board downstairs, or you can make check, checks payable to uh, Tennessee Children's Home. If you have a college student and you are planning to uh, apply for a, a church scholarship this year, the absolute deadline for your form is this Thursday, so don't miss it. And this coming Saturday at Kiwanis Park will be the annual egg hunt and family day. Did you hear that, kids? Annual Easter egg hunt and family day. Uh, this Saturday uh, at Kiwanis Park, the egg hunt begins promptly at 10 a.m., so don't be late. Because once they say go, those uh, eggs will be gone soon. So be there to start at 10, and then lunch will be served at noon. Uh, the church will be providing chicken fingers, uh, and there's also a sign-up sheet for sides and desserts uh, downstairs by the uh, bulletin board by the elevator if you haven't signed up to bring a side dish of some sort. Um, and then there will be a baby shower at Crossroads Pregnancy Clinic on Sunday, April 16th, so two weeks from today, uh, beginning at 2 o'clock for one of the clients there. And it's really a great way for this congregation to show love and support and, uh, and just be Jesus to... Uh, to what it is, someone who's about to be a new mother. Uh, so uh, if you'd like to help with that, uh, please. Uh, there. Laura's going to post something on the little Facebook. It's on there now. Oh, it's on there now. Way to go, Laura. Of gift items. We, yeah, and I've asked for hostesses. I do have hostess help. Fantastic. But I love people too. The more the merrier. The more the merrier. Well. Bring a gift and come mm -hmm. and go. And the more, the more we show Please consider helping with that. I also wanted to mention, uh, maybe this is in the bulletin, I just missed it. Uh, the community Holy Week services, of course, of this week leading up to Easter Sunday. Uh, tomorrow, Jim Black is speaking, and Riverside and Washington Street are providing food. So I know some of you are already lined up to uh, to bring some food in the morning. What time will the office be open in the morning, Donna? Eight. 
Okay, so if they needed to bring it by before work or something, they could they could drop it off or something. Um, um, and I'm and I'm told Ann Underwood is the POC if you uh, haven't volunteered but want to uh, help out with that maybe, uh, for tomorrow. That I know it's short notice, but uh, that's that's tomorrow. If you will, open up to number two hundred and fifty. Song. We don't. I don't read this song very often. It, it's about it's about the light of the, of God guiding our paths, and that's something obviously we believe very strongly in. You know, this is this is a special week this week uh, for so many reasons, um, and this Wednesday is a particularly special day with biblical significance and. Um, you know, it's, we call it on our Gregorian uh, calendars, we call it April 5th, right? April, this Wednesday will be April 5th. On the Hebrew calendar, this is the 14th day of Nisan. Um, and that is the day, of course, Exodus 12 speaks of. It's the day that the Israelites were commanded to slaughter the lamb, eat the lamb. And originally, in the Exodus 12 story, uh, it's how God brought his people out of uh, Egypt uh, in the night after 400 years as slaves in Egypt. And that's this Wednesday night on the, on the calendar. Uh, so that means that this Wednesday night begins Passover week, as we would call it, or the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, which a lot of Bible translations refer to it as. You know, that night, in, out, of, out of Egypt, 600,000 men plus women plus children plus animals left Egypt in the middle of the night after they ate their very first ever uh, Passover meal. And you think about, I mean, imagine what a scene that was. 600,000 men plus women, children, and animals getting up and just leaving. Uh, that had to be a pretty amazing event. Just the physical movement of that many people and animals in, through the night. So one of the things that occurred to me was what kept those people from running into each other and running over each other in the middle of the night, getting out of it. Um, and, I, and I'm certain they had torch technology and they had lantern or lamp technology. Uh, but God, as we know, doesn't leave things to chance. And he had a plan, and he provided everything they were going to need, including, on that night, a full moon. So we all know how bright a full moon is on a clear night. And on the 14th of Nisan, when they ate their Passover meal and got up and walked out of Egypt, uh, God lit their paths with a full moon. Well, the cool thing is, this Wednesday night, that same full moon, it's going to be there for you and me to see, uh, if it's clear. Now, they are talking about rain this week, okay? Uh, if it's a clear night, if it's a clear night, we can see that. That same full moon that God used over 3,000 years ago to evacuate his people out of Egypt is going to be in our sky uh, this Wednesday night. And that's pretty significant to me. Um, so I would encourage you either before or after, I'm not sure when it gets dark or when we'll be able to see it best, but sometime Wednesday night, take a look at the moon, if you can see it through the clouds, and just kind of marvel at how God took care of his people 3,000 years ago and how he is still lighting our paths today, right, with his life through his son Jesus. What a blessing. And just a God who has seasons and festivals and He's a God of details and just how he takes care of us. Um, it's just he's an amazing God. Now, if you'd like to, let's stand and sing uh, about God's life. Brightly gleams our Father's mercy from his heart.
I'll talk so long. We'll only do one more song and then you can actually do it twice. Uh, <laughs> first of all, I bet, I bet we have young people in the audience tonight who have never heard that song, right? That's what I thought. Well, welcome to a great song about God's life. Um, let's sing 379 before uh, Charles and before we, we just do the final hour. Okay, perfect. Boy, the kids uh, tonight have a banner night, don't they? Right. Have some songs before. I don't want to it's exciting. Can you help me on all the parts? This is a great, great song. Soon we'll come to the end of my journey, and perhaps we'll never meet anymore till we get. share a few more biblical thoughts, and then we'll close out in prayer, okay? Uh, so let's think about this for just a moment. You know, if I were to ask you all collectively, you know, what was the mission of Jesus? I'm fairly confident most of us would come to the conclusion that he came for the sole purpose of seeking and saving the lost, right? We would all be in agreement with that. We would share a passage like Luke 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And, and we would be correct, and, and, and we, would, we would certainly uh, embrace that as our mission. Like That's what we are here for. That's what we need to be doing. One of the things I, I find, Jesus, as he came for the purpose of doing that, you know, he knew when to ultimately understand that God's plan was about to be put into place, 
ultimately the purpose for which he came would be fulfilled at Calvary and he would die on the cross. And before he died, he said, it is finished. Now, in saying that, that means that not his work is finished. His work's not finished. As a matter of fact, his life was not really finished in one sense, right? Because he came back to life. But he had fulfilled God's plan. It was finished in the sense that, you know, he had paid the debt. The price had been paid for our salvation. He did exactly what God sent him here to do. Now, the interesting thing is, as he left this earth for the final time from, from a human standpoint, he left, he left this earth, he went back to heaven, and before he did that, he gave us a commission, right? Gave us a commission. He reinstated his vision, as we've been talking about in our Sunday morning class with our young professionals. He, he said, you know, I want you to go into all the world, and I want you to preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He who disbelieves shall be condemned. So I want you to understand that in one sense, yes, his life uh, was that he was about to give himself and his physical life for our sins. And he had finished the purpose for which God had sent him. But he still has a lot of work to do. And the work that he still has to do involves you and me. He again reinstated that great commission. But then as we noticed in his life, and as we understand from our perspective in his kingdom, we have the responsibility of carrying out his will and his work and to help others to not only come to see him for salvation, but we are here to serve. You know, we, we are in the business of serving others. And that's uh, really the mission that he, that he came and I just uh, came for. And I want you to understand that, that while it is finished, from fulfilling God's purpose for our salvation, his work is never finished. That, that statement, one of the seven short statements that he made on the cross while hanging there was important for him fulfilling that mission. But that work is not over. We still have the responsibility of fulfilling that work. Now, let me just say this. I just find this amazing about Jesus, and then we'll have a prayer here in just a moment, and I'll turn, uh, turn it over to uh, uh, J.B. and Al. I, I want you to think about, I think about myself personally, honestly. Um, anyone else in here a fellow grouchy person? <laughs> anyone? Yeah, I, Andy, I would agree that agree with that about you. You're a fellow <laughs> grouchy person. Okay, anyone else grouchy? Get grouchy. Okay, how many of you, when you're on task, you're on point, you're on mission, you're like you're so focused that when someone starts to mess with you, I'm just like, kids, leave me alone. Any, anyone else like that? Some of you like that, right? We get like that. Yeah, we get, and, and, and I will say that at times when I'm so focused on trying to get something done, you know, I can, I, I wouldn't say I'm rude, but I'm very borderline. Like, I'm just like, leave me alone. Let me get this finished. And then we can talk. And then we can have fun. And then it's all good. What I find about, that's amazing about Jesus is he understood his purpose for which he came. He understood that even after he left this earth, from a physical standpoint, there would still be a lot that needed to be done. But while he was here, and while he was focused, and while he was on point, you know, it's amazing to me that children couldn't resist it. I think about how grouchy I get at times around my own kids and around others when I'm so focused. And Jesus, wasn't he focused? Wasn't he on point? Didn't he set his face before that final week to Jerusalem? He knew what he had come for. But yet kids couldn't stop being around him. You know, while he was serving, he took time to enjoy, what, the lilies of the field, the birds in the air. You know, I, I think about just even worship. You know, he was so excited, so enamored with God, his Father, and creation that, that when it was time to worship, he would worship God with joy, with excitement, with love, with fervor. You know, and I, I think about how we're so enamored with all of the circumstances and problems in our world, and he just didn't let that get the best of it. I hope as we think about our position at this moment in time, right here at Washington Street, we will understand we need to do the same thing. We need to be on point. We need to accomplish the mission. We need to understand we're responsible for greater service. And as we serve, we need to remember we're we're probably more like Jesus in those moments than we are at any other time in our life when we're serving others. 
As a matter of fact, in Matthew 10, beginning with verse 24, a disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher, and a servant like his master. If they've called you, the, if, they, if they've called the master of the house Beelzebub, now in this case they were obviously uh, discrediting some of the miracles Jesus was doing. How much more will they call those of his household, those disciples who belong? Therefore, do not uh, fear them, for there's nothing uh, covered that will not be revealed, and nothing hidden that will not be known. Now, I, I share that passage, and especially the last part of it. When our elders set before us a plan uh, of how we can better serve, how we can be more like Jesus, I want to tell you, we're going to do a lot of good. There's going to be a lot of good that's going to come out of this, and none of it will be hidden. It will all ultimately make a difference. It will honor our Father, and it will, it will shine a light in our community. And that's really the intent of what we're trying to accomplish here at Washington Street. If you don't mind, let's bow. Let's go to God in a word of prayer, and then uh, I'll invite Alan and JB up to share it with us. So let's bow. Father, we are so thankful to be a part of your family. You have blessed us by the blood of your son, Jesus. You've connected our lives together where, in reality, we might not be connected at all. <clears throat> Father, we come from different backgrounds. We come from different mentalities of how we think. Uh, we have a lot of different interests, a lot of different likes and dislikes. But yet, your son brings us together. It's through him that we are family. And Father, it's amazing to see your family at work, thriving, unified, uh, in a collective way, doing good to help others to come to know your son, Jesus. And while we're doing that, Father, we pray that you will give us a greater heart of service so we can be like our Lord, our teacher, our rabbi, Jesus. Father, help us to be as much like him as we possibly can. And we reflect on the fact that when we love and when we serve and when we honor and help others, we are as much like him in those moments than we are any other time in our life. Father, I am personally grateful for our elders. It's not an easy job to lead people. It's not an easy job to lead people with business. Father, we understand that. It's not easy to lead our homes in some respects. It's not easy to lead people, especially in a spiritual way. It's tough. None of us in here are perfect. Our elders are not perfect. Their families are not perfect. But yet, you bring a group of imperfect people together. You put among us shepherds to shepherd this flock. For that, we're grateful. We pray, Father, that you will give us a spirit of gratitude and thanksgiving for these men and for their service to this church, your kingdom, your flock here. Father, we pray that you will help them to uh, be blessed with wisdom to make wise choices and decisions for us as a spiritual family. I pray that you will give them courage to lead us. Even in, at times when we don't really want to be led, I pray that you will help them to always be out front, showing the way. And I pray, Father, we will be the kind of people, the kind of flock that will follow our good shepherds. We're thankful for your son Jesus, the perfect example of being the good shepherd. I pray, Father, that you will Help them to be like him. Help us to follow the voice of our shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Father, we're thankful for this family, this time, and this moment. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Charles, I appreciate that excellent lead-in and that prayer. So, um, no pressure on us. Uh, especially part that we're not perfect, right? That's right. <laughs> but, amen. Uh, Come on, amen. Right. <laughs> amen. But uh, we, we do appreciate uh, everybody's patience. Uh, we've taken a little bit of an extended break this year um, from our small groups from what we've typically done in the past few years. We appreciate that extra month or two to kind of give us more time to, to pray on, on this decision and kind of the path ahead. So, um, and we appreciate all the uh, feedback that you all have. Speak up a little more. I'm sorry. Well, that's better. All right. 
So appreciate all of y'all, um, the input that you all provided, uh, that JB and I have asked for, and Charles gathered a lot of input, so that, that was uh, everything that was submitted and talked to us about, was considered and, and prayed about. So uh, anyway, so basically the um, format that we're going to try to do this uh, year for Sunday nights is uh, typically, as you know, we spent the first Sunday night of each month here all together in the auditorium like we are now. And we're going to maintain that and we're going to add the second Sunday night. So basically every month from here to here for the rest of the year, the first and second Sunday night will be all together here at 6 p.m. And then um, those are going to be a class type format that Charlie, I believe that's right, that, okay, that he's kind of established over the past few months. I think we've received a lot of good feedback on that. But they're going to be uh, focused on certain things. Uh, the first Sunday night, we're going to allow you all to provide feedback on what sermon topics or lessons that you all have heard. Um, I know there's a lot of good things that you either never heard preached on before or want to hear a lesson on, you know, what does the Church of Christ believe about this or that. So starting today, right now, let us know any topics or classes that you would want to hear. Uh, and don't think that everybody else has done that, so you should. That's right, right. So let, let any of us three know, and we'll put that in the rotation, and Charles will kind of, I'm sure there'll be some commonality in some of the topics, so he may combine two or three in one week or whatever, so we'll leave that up to him. So please, uh, be thinking about what topics you want to uh, follow on and, and uh, let us know about that. So that'll be the first week. The second week of each month, we're going to kind of allow Ch uh, Charles to give us a, a charge, uh, if you will, for the small groups to concentrate on and focus on for weeks three and four. And that will be, uh, as we talked about this morning, you're observing. Uh, you just talked about a little bit a while ago. A couple of quotes I wrote down from your lesson this morning. The early church practiced sharing life together. So that's an excellent, you know, theme, I guess, for the the year, you know, we talked about be the church instead of, you know, we are the church, but let's go be the church outside in our community. Um, so, you know, be the feet and hands of, of Jesus. And then another quote from your lesson this morning, we must be devoted. You know, we ask that you, you, you know, be devoted to this. Um, that's one of the, kind of the, the downfalls of some of the previous years. It seemed like some of the small groups started out really well, but they kind of, you know, didn't end up so well. They kind of, not scattered, but um, kind of faltered a little bit or kind of got to where they were not real consistent. So anyway, we would ask that you be devoted to your, your small group this year. And we're going to maintain the 6 p.m. service here in the auditorium on the, even on the third and fourth week. So we're not going to disband that anyway. We're going to continue. And both Andy and uh, Kent have graciously agreed to kind of pick that up and continue with that. So we appreciate that for you too. And so the, the that second week, that chart, it could be anything from here's a lesson we want the small groups to study, or here's a, a service project you, we want you to focus on. It could be here's some needs that maybe some of the deacons have, have fed up to us that said, okay, we, you know, this really is a need this month. We, we need somebody to help with that. It could be, you know, visitations, you know, people that, you know, nursing homes, uh, shut-ins, people that we need to go uh, visit or call or send a car to. Anyway, just kind of that be the church. And so we're going to leave it open to small groups to be creative in the ways that we want you to, you know, come up with your own service projects that kind of focuses on that, that charge for the month. And we're, again, we're going to kind of lean on, on Charles and James to kind of help direct our focus and, and uh, thoughts on what that third and fourth week would be. So the third and fourth week would be the, the small groups, and I know we have several that's already well established. We may have some that, that are new this year or kind of revamped, I think. So um, we're going to allow, I guess, time tonight afterwards for you to talk with the shared group leaders and just kind of, you know, give them the new format, you know, make sure they're still going to, you know, lead a group, uh, maybe when and where you meet. It doesn't have to be at 6 p.m. on Sunday night. I think I heard this morning one group's going to be at 7 p.m., I believe. I think so, yeah. um, last year, there was a group that met at Tuesday nights, I think. So, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty open. We're, we're leaving that <laughs> after. Sure. Lunch, lunch will still meet, uh, I would assume, you know, so after Sunday morning worship and Bible class. So we're going to leave a lot of flexibility in the plan, but kind of 
I'd like to give that direction on, on week two as to what we, we want you to be involved in. Again, uh, I'm going to lean on some of our, our deacons and uh, James and Terry as well. If they have a service project or you can involve the youth or the children's group to, to help with that. Um, so anyway, just be creative. And um, just looking through my notes here to make sure I've captured everything. Yeah, on, on field Sundays, uh, any month of uh, five Sundays, that field Sunday, just like April, we're going to have a fellowship meal potluck after a Bible class on Sunday morning. Charles is going to give a, a brief devo, maybe sing a song or two, and then we'll break for the day on, on those field Sunday months. Um, and again, please ask any questions if you have. Um, we'll be available afterwards. Um, and it, it also note, if for some reason your small group cannot meet on weeks three or four for whatever reason, somebody's sick or out of town or the host's home, you know, can't be available, please be available, you know, come here and meet with us at six. I mean, there will always be a lesson here at 6 p.m. on Sunday evening, so. Um, and, and we're not limiting that group, so Andy and Ken, if you all want to plan your own service project, feel free to do that too you know we're not trying to say that this group that meets here cannot do service work as well so so i think that that in a nutshell kind of sums everything up to what we have thought of i know i'm missing something so i'll let you know yeah, go 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 um, we've been in prayer about this for a pretty good while and we've tossed around ideas everywhere from not having groups this year at all to just having groups and not having an assembly at the building and, and in terms of the totality of the feedback that we have this is the direction that we believe the Lord's led us to go into for, for this year and it's going to feel a little different because it's, it is different there are going to be expectations which we've already set in place that people come to the building for the first and the second Sunday nights for the first Sunday night to hear a lesson like what we haven't heard before, something different or a class that you can all participate in so that we can fellowship all together. For the second Sunday night to, to get to have the benefit of the charge for the groups for that particular month or that quarter or however it works so that the groups can maintain focus and that we can understand the direction that the groups are taking. So there's an idea behind that we're trying to increase accountability and expectations while we're trying to be the church. Those things are important to us. Uh, we, we want our fellowship to grow as a result of all the things that we're doing here, but specifically as it relates to what we're about to embark on. And the idea now is for this to continue from beginning this month and run through the end of the year, right? As far as that part of it goes. So it may be a little different around Thanksgiving time because we've been used to having a break. It's going to be different this year. It's going to be different. We're not giving you three weeks to recruit people. Good luck. Get started. <laughs> okay? We also realize and know that there are groups that have been active even in the absence of our meeting together. We don't want to stop those people that are being the church being the church and we hope that makes sense to you whether your your group meets after the Sunday night service at a restaurant to talk over the Sunday night service or whether your group meets Sunday at lunch or whenever that might be we don't want to discourage that because we believe that's part of the reflection of Christ in our body going forward in, in this place so we have those expectations Yes, it may be looser. We're not going to give you five questions in a sheet to go over the sermon this year. We're not going to do that. We are counting on an opportunity to envelop people who are new to our assembly, to en enhance and encourage those who have done this for years and might be tired to look at something different or do the same, as long as you do it with commitment and fellowship. Those are generally our ideas. When I think about that, I think it's very apropos what Charles preached on this morning. And I have uh, some scripture in mind that 
you might think this is a little different. You wouldn't think it odd for an elder in the Church of Christ to be in Acts 2, I wouldn't think, as far as that part of it goes. But I want to point out something to you there that, that might relate to what we're talking about. The heading beginning in verse 40 is the vital church grows. And with many other words he testified, y'all know who he is, I'm not going to preach a whole sermon, I'll leave that up to Charles, and exhorted them saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Words to think about in 2023. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. Those things are happening here. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. Boy, we could rejoice if we had a movement like that. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. We talked about fellowship a great deal this morning. It's described in the next part of that verse, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. We ask for your prayers for this year. For our assembly at the church, for each of our groups to be the church, for them to be able to enhance the lives of people in their groups, to grow closer together and to grow in fellowship with each other. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Why can't that occur now with Christ as a centerpiece for what we're doing? Now, all who believed were together and had all things in common. No, we're not going to ask you to sell everything. Y'all know that the bird, that verse is next. And they sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. Verse 46, I guess maybe I've looked at it in a different way since I've been thinking about this. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Two locations. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. Isn't that what we're after for the sake of Christ? So if you'll bow with me, I'll pray for where we're headed this year. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to reflect and the patience of this congregation to reach a place to go forward. Father, thank you for all those who gave input, um, whether they agree or disagree with the decisions that, made, that has been made. Father, we just pray that your will be done in this place we have opportunity to be the church in this coming year in ways that we haven't before. That we enhance each other's lives and fellowship, both those who are inside the church and those who will come to the church because of your will. Father, we just pray that you give us an active, working faith for, for Sunday night and all days coming forward in this year. We pray that the efforts that will be made in each group be fruit, that it will be a sweet savor to you, Father, that your work will be done, that it, does, that it won't matter who gets the credit as long as it glorifies you. Father, be with us as we take this on. Give us discernment and opportunity. We pray it all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. One thing to, for me to plug as I sit down as a beginning point for a need for service is I think it's probably a really good idea if all the groups help with setup and takedown for the fifth Sunday potlucks. So one of the things we'll be asking you to think about doing is <coughs> each two groups get together each fifth Sunday, support that in that way as a way for us to do something to grow closer together together, and it's, it won't be too hard. You can set that up and take that down, and that will be a good place for us to have a beginning point for what we're doing on fifth Sunday. That's just one idea. We don't want to limit God. There are a bunch of ideas. Yeah, a couple more things I thought of is um, for the first of Sunday, first and second Sundays, uh, Miss Terry will have the children's Bible hour like she is tonight. So that will be continued for those weeks. And like we said, you know, we encourage uh, the small groups to want to fellowship with each other. You know, don't, don't feel like you got to always stay 
just that small group on the third or fourth week. If you want to reach out and you know a couple of groups get together or jointly plan a certain project or a fellowship deal or whatever. So that's definitely encouraged as well. Thank you. Okay, let me share a few thoughts and then we'll we will close uh, tonight. Um, Again, as they mentioned, the first Sunday, every every first Sunday of the month, we're going to talk about something that you have given. So the good thing about that for me is, if it's bad, I can blame you, right? But I want to hear your feedback. So if you have something you want to talk about, you want me to talk about, now there might be times where it could be more of a class setting where we're having interaction. There might be times where it's still going to be a class setting. It might be that if, if it's why do we believe this specific thing, I might have a lot of material that I want to just share at the beginning, kind of kind of help us understand here's the biblical uh, concept behind it, so on and so forth. But any comment, and that's not just uh, on things that why do we do this. It could be any topic that you have. We can get those topics from the youth group. We can get them from parents. We can get them from some of our senior members. Wherever those come from, I will take them. And, and as Alan pointed out, we might uh, take two or three on one particular uh, Sunday evening. Again, the second Sunday evening is more of a charge to which Mark Clark just sent me a, uh, a text message <laughs> just a moment ago. So, so mind you, I'm calling him out for texting me. But uh, you, you might remember, how many of you are uh, like... Um, Middle to, I guess, middle to late 80s uh, parents or, or did, how many of you grew, let's just do this, how many of you grew up in the middle to late 80s? So you did, right? You remember Charles in Charge? And that's the second Sunday night of every, <laughs> thank you, Mark. <laughs> thank you. Scott Bale, you know, I look nothing like Scott Bale, but there you go. Uh, Christy kind of wishes, okay, let's not even go there. Um, but let me, let me say, the second Sunday night it is just, it, and, and I, we're going to get some more clarity about how all of that's going to go. If you have something that needs to be done in this community, you think this is a good thing, this is happening with the school, and we can go and we can do this for our teachers at City or Lincoln County or wherever, okay? You share that, and we're going to give a little bit of a charge. It's not that we're trying to, and I think both Alan and JB alluded to this, it's not that we're trying to... Uh, decide what all happens in every group every week. That's not the concept at all. It's just a basis to start with. Here's one thing we would like to do. And it might be that only one group, uh, that's just big enough for one group. It might be that there are times where we can collectively do something. But that doesn't mean that every third and fourth week when you want to do something, you get to decide in your group what you do and how you do it. Okay? It's just a charge for you to be <laughs> motivated to do something. Okay, It may be that your group has already decided we're going to do this this uh, fourth Sunday or this third Sunday. And one of the other two, we're going to just take a time and just talk about some things that we've got questions about in our own group. Okay, So you have liberty in all of this. And I think that uh, it also, from JB's standpoint, was communicated that, you know, I, I'll just use the lunch bunch, for example. Every Sunday, it doesn't conflict with anything that's happening. Every Sunday after service, they're going, to, they're going to still meet. And so not trying to squelch any good thing that's happening. Uh, again, I think that goes back to what those two guys stood before us not long ago and shared, that they uh, are encouraging good works, good things that, uh, to be done. And so, you know, there's some liberty with your small group, and I, I want you to, I hope you understood that, that part of it uh, from their perspective. But if you've got something that you want heard preached on, taught on, let me know. If you've got something you want me to give a personal charge to, and again, we're going to try to solicit input from our deacons, from you as members. Hey, we would like for you to be a part of this. Let's get on board. I'll get up here and share it, okay? So kind of helps you a little bit about the uh, first and second week. And again, the third and fourth week, church, church small group, you know, just, just be the hands and feet of Jesus and uh, do what you can. I, I'll tell you, you want to make a difference in the lives of your kids, your grandkids, let them see you serving others. They'll never forget it. I, I can assure you of that. Let me kind of close out by doing this. I, I want to talk about, because we are talking about serving others, helping others to see Jesus in us, whether it's through what we're saying or what we're doing. I want you to think about this. These are just 
you know, ways to help people see Jesus in us. Number one, have a genuine concern for others. Now, in saying that, that doesn't imply that you don't. Um, but I, I know sometimes when we serve, we kind of feel like, oh, I've got to be down there and I've got to do this. You know. No, let's, let's have a genuine concern for others. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from a sincere faith. Be genuine about your faith. Be genuine about your concern uh, for others. Number two, have a willingness to go the extra mile. I mean, we are extra mile people, aren't we? I mean, it, I will tell you, it's not always, that second mile is not always fun, but it's absolutely needed. Uh, I, may share, I may preach a sermon at some point on the second mile. But uh, just have a willingness to go the extra mile, the second mile. Uh, and again, it's never comfortable. Matthew chapter 5, beginning with verse 38, you've heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn to him... Uh, Turn the other off to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. Whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. So let's be second mile people as we're considering. We're going to be genuine. We're going to be second mile people. And then we're going to display a spirit of love for God and for praise. You know, Praise can happen even while we're serving. We have this mentality that praise only happens when we're here together for one hour in, 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 uh, collectively while we're worshiping. No, praise can happen by someone who's giving God thanks for the good that you're doing to help them. You can praise God as well by serving and also giving Him the credit for all that's happening. In 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning with verse 7, You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware this, you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. I, I will tell you, when we get out and we do what we are supposed to be doing, when we follow the example of Christ, I can assure you that we are letting our light shine. And Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And glorify your Father in heaven. What we're doing, this whole plan that uh, has been prayed over, uh, that they've been led to share, has been a plan that is certainly believed to be from God. Okay, And, and we're going to embrace it. I, I will tell you, uh, I, I just know this from preaching sermons at times that people didn't necessarily like, but were biblical. That happens. Um, I will tell you from being in a position of leadership, not always are people happy with your leadership. You make decisions at times that you know when you make this decision, half the congregation is going to feel one way and the other half is going to feel the other way. That's difficult to do, I can assure you. And uh, I just pray for us as a church family that we will appreciate the leadership of our elders, that we will humbly submit to their leadership their passion for God, their passion for us as a spiritual family, and their passion to make a difference in this community. Everything that's been done has, been, has not been done, certainly, just because they say, you know, here's what we want to do, and we're telling you to do it. That's not the attitude nor the spirit that it was given, and it should not be received in that way. They genuinely prayed over this for months. I've seen it. I know their families have seen it. I know these two guys have experienced it on numerous occasions, and they've, they've put together this plan. I hope that we can embrace it. I hope that we will move forward, and again, not trying to squelch any good that needs to be happening in your group. They're not trying to do that. They're just giving direction for all of us, and I hope that uh, we will be praying for our elders and certainly let them know that we appreciate their service. Um, we will have a closing prayer, and as always, if you didn't have the opportunity this morning, to take the Lord's Supper, you can exit out of the building. Most of you are familiar with the room where it's offered. Someone will be in there to help you in just a few moments. I am very grateful to be a part of our spiritual family here at Washington Street, and I know that you are as well. And I'm thankful for our elders. I'm thankful for our deacons as well, and for each member who makes this family exactly what it is today. Let's bow.
Father, we're grateful for our spiritual family here at Washington Street. We're thankful for James and Kaylee and for uh, their work with our youth. We're thankful for uh, their love for us. Uh, we're grateful for their leadership. Uh, we ask, Father, that you would continue to be with Terry and our children uh, and the ministry that, that uh, is so important to the faith of this congregation both now and in the future. Grateful for our Bible class teachers, Father, who put so much time, effort, and energy into uh, sharing your word, to being excited about uh, and committed to and embracing the plan that you've given to us in your word. I'm thankful for our deacons and our elders for their service here in, in your kingdom uh, at Washington Street. Father, I pray that you will help us to have a greater appreciation for uh, our brethren in this city and for uh, other congregations uh, that are connected to us. I pray that you will help us to have a, a greater sense of fellowship, of love, and compassion. Father, again, we love you and we're so thankful for the gift of your son Jesus, for his willingness to come, to love, to serve, to give his life as a ransom for us. We pray that you will help us to pour our lives out, not only for one another, but also for this community. In the name of your Son, we offer this prayer. Amen. Amen. We're dismissed. <laughs>